We're here today with uh, Steve Gormley. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. It's a pleasure to be here. It's nice to see you again. I was wondering if you could tell us a bit about the your company, the in International Canna Brands. International Canna Brands is essentially an aggregation platform. We're publicly traded on the CSE. Um, we went public last September, and we are aggregating a family of brands, um, emerging brands, kind of like a regional, if you thought about it in the context of a regional beer uh, mm -hmm. model, mm -hmm. that's really what we're looking to do, but in cannabis. And we're assembling businesses that are profitable, uh, with strong fundamentals, and rock solid management teams. And that's our basic strategy, to assemble these family of brands, aggregate these brands, um, so that, and, and also, put into the mix businesses that generate a lot of cash mm -hmm. so that we can report on fundamentals because I think we've all noticed there's been a wild exuberance, I'll call it, in the uh, cannabis markets Absolutely. here in Canada and south of the border, really driven more by hype than by actual fundamentals. And the way we are looking to distinguish ourselves in the market is by being a profitable company and being able to regularly report earnings and profit, profits to our shareholders in the market. And so that's really where we see our niche developing because there'll be a point where all this exuberance dies down and the market will eventually move away from kind of a hype-driven focus mm -hmm. to really coming back to hardcore fundamentals, EBITDA, earnings, profits, and we at International Canna Brands plan on addressing that out of the gate. Okay. Well, can you tell us a bit about your, your products? So we just completed our first acquisition um, in Washington State, uh, a company called Riotus, which provides financial services for uh, cultivators and uh, extraction businesses in the state of Washington. Uh, we also have uh, Juju Royal, which is a brand that is, has been developed in conjunction with Julian Marley. Julian Marley is one of Bob Marley's children. He's a reggae artist uh, out of London and Jamaica and Miami. And we have uh, licensed his name and are, have worked with him and his team on the development of some really well-packaged uh, brand, really well packaged uh, products in the oil and flour space. Okay, so tell me about how you're better than your peers in. I think I covered it by saying we're driven by profits and earnings. We're actually in the market. We're not in beta. We are not, we, we in short order won't be operating in the red. Um, we are picking management teams uh, and companies that are not ne necessarily on the market we are looking for and have developed a pipeline of off-market regional brands that have strong brand recognition and a loyal consumer base in the markets they serve. We're targeting profitable brands that are franchisable, uh, not only within their states, but also in the Canadian market and at that point in the future when prohibition is repealed in the US. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so at this point, so what are you working on from a shareholder equity standpoint and how are you looking to improve shareholders' positions? Well, we've just gone through, actually this past weekend, a re corporate restructuring of the company. We, were, uh, we had a pre preferred share structure that we've since retired uh, to make it more market friendly and we are reducing the number of shares in the float. There has been a significant return of shares to the Treasury and we're making the vehicle itself more pristine and market friendly to be able to raise capital to deploy against our acquisition uh, pipeline and to be able to effectuate our business plan. Okay. So tell us about how your experience with the CSE has been so far. I, I, I would say not just the CSE, but ca I'm American and um, America is generally used to leading the way in terms of uh, its finance business in almost every industry. But I have to say that right here on Bay Street, we are actually on the Wall Street of cannabis. And I think it's going to stay that way for at least a decade. 
because if you look at, even if prohibition were repealed in the United States tomorrow, it would take a half a decade for mm -hmm. investors to get comfortable with institutions on Wall Street being able to properly vet and evaluate different cannabis businesses. While here on Bay Street, your institutions are, are, are doing tens, hundreds of transactions in the space. You have a domain knowledge and an expertise, a network and a feel for the pulse of the industry as a whole that the United States won't be able to catch for years to come. And I think that Canada for the unforeseeable future will remain the financial capital of the cannabis industry worldwide. Okay, thanks for your time. Thanks, Phil. I'm happy to be here and happy to be on Bay Street with you. Thank you. Take care.